Hey, I'm Gary from Piaggio Planners, York Springs, Pennsylvania. We also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply. Today we are talking about, and we're going to build this multi bin system here, a multi plant bin. Um, there's lots of different things about this that are kind of cool for some people. This is be great for like lettuce, some herbs or something. Um, I've had a lot of people come into the store over the years want me to help them build these things. And one of the main problems with this system is if something happens to one of your plants and you have to get rid of it, the roots are going to be in there and they're going to be rotting and they're going to mess everything else up. So you got to keep that in mind when you're going to try to build something like this. Um, this thing is a deep water culture. Um, inside of here, we're, this is based off of, uh, this particular one I built is based off of Emily's Garden by Hydro Farm. Um, that's something they sold a six plant system. They used five by five pots and they used to sell it, but they discontinued it. And somebody came in asking for one. So voila, I, like I always do, I go start building stuff. And it turned out pretty cool. Um, got a 17 gallon tote here. Um, inside here, we got a couple, couple air stones bubbling away in there and on the front side of this I went and added uh, kind of an extended water level indicator here and also this can be taken off and used to drain it which is going to make it easier for people um, two output air pump here and it's a cool little system um, there's a a lot of little tips and tricks to this so i'm going to be going through all that i'm not going to make this a short video sorry <laughs> you know you know me with my videos everything's thorough so uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to the hardware store and pick out some bins because people come in here all the time talking about bins and there's definitely some things to consider about bins so let's head on to the hardware store you need to consider some things when you're buying a bin um clear is bad obviously Two great plastic things out the door for a lot of this stuff, but sometimes you just need to buy a bin. Um, these are your cheap ones. They've had like bins from all over for the past 10 years, and I've seen them. Good ones come and go. I've seen them anywhere from five bucks to 50 bucks. Um, when you buy something like this, even if it was black, when you fill it up with water, the sides are going to bulge out, and then your lid is not going to fit on right. So you need to get something strong. And plus, you don't want the light going through and all that. Um, some of these bins are have their purpose like this would be great for lettuce but you want to have to black this out somehow wrap it up so it doesn't you know let light through to grow algae um, another thing to consider when you're buying a bin is the lid the lid itself you want to kind of try to find a lid that's inset like this lid here is not inset it's just topped off so any water that comes out is going to run over the side of the bin and that's not good that one's got a little bit of an inset in it so if water came out it would go back into the bin and not run over the side but then you're back to your cheap bins again this one's not clear and it might be nice but once you fill up with water you're going to have a major problem and it's just not going to work here they're a little bit stronger and they've got a decent lid too I kind of like them so you can do something with that they're about 10 bucks here um, the ones I like are the tough totes what I call the tough totes there used to be a brand that actually said tough tote on it but these things here they're very strong on the sides the lid is funky on them, but the lid sets sets down nicely into them. And they also kind of snap on. So once it's snapped on, these little these little things will keep the water from ever bulging out. So not bad. They're about ten bucks. That's what we're gonna be using on a couple different systems that we're gonna be building, which is one of them's in this video you're watching right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to grab six of them today. So yeah, when you're buying bins, keep those things in mind. The lid's important, and how strong the bin itself is is important. And just keep that in mind. All right, we're back from the store. We got our bin here. 
Um, there's lots of different things you can do with the bin. You can use round pots, you can use square pots, you can use one big one. We're gonna go look at some of those right now. So follow us over here. These are all different square pots. I know everybody's probably at home thinking, why would you do that? Well, the reason really is because the, the net baskets that we usually use, the round ones are usually only like that tall. So this gets it down deeper in the water. Um, this is the five by fives is what uh, Hyde Farm used for the Emily's garden. Um, we have all different sizes of these things. Like you could do a couple nine by nines in there. That would be pretty awesome. Just for a two plant version. You could do one big 12 by 12 in there and just have one, one plant. That would be one big bubble bucket. That would also work. And also we got the round ones. So follow me over here. The round ones come in all different sizes. Some of the bigger ones get pretty deep, but you're still only gonna be able to fit like three of these on that lid. So three and a three, these are three and three quarter. You could probably get a ton of them on there, but then you're back to your, your water level is probably never gonna be, it's gonna be within an inch and a half down. Like you're not gonna be able to fill that bin to the top rim. So this thing is really just, that's why we're doing the square ones three inch and then again your water level they don't go down very far so just some things you want to keep in mind when you're building these things same with your little two inch here so that's why we're going to do the square ones today um, while we're over here i'm going to go ahead and get some of my other stuff before i trip on my cord here <laughs> um we're going to use a two output air pump for this it's roughly 15 gallons in this bin so my, my general rule is always one air stone does about five gallons, but since we're in one bin sharing the water, two should be totally fine. Um, we're also gonna need some air tubing, which if you haven't watched all our other videos, we've gone into great detail about all that. And um, I'm gonna grab a couple of these right here all to do the job. And some medium round air stones here. Remember, if you use really small air stones, it can restrict your pump. So we're gonna at least use the mediums here. You could go crazy with this and do real big air stones. You could go use like a big six foot out, six out air pump and really bubble the heck out of it. So, but since this bin is gonna be for smaller plants or at least it should be, this double output pump should be all you need. Um, and we're gonna go back over the table, meet you over there. All right, um, I got my air stuff over here and we're gonna let that sit here for now. Um, later we're gonna go back over and grab the stuff for the water level indicator kit. But now it's time to do some drilling and cutting, my favorite part. Um, the first one of these I built, I thought about things and like you're gonna be using a jigsaw on this, so you can't really jigsaw because of this lip here. So what I ended up doing was flipping this thing over and it kind of, it's kind of nice guys, little nubs right here that keep the lid from sliding around. So that actually locks it on. And then that'll give me a surface that I can get it cut right. Um, you could probably just take a ruler and try to figure out where you want to drill this stuff at. Um, what I came to the conclusion of on this is these little, these ridges here are kind of your strength to the system. So I'm going to try to leave a nice ridge down the middle. So my pots are pretty much going to be offset to the sides, so I get that nice supportive ridge down the middle, and something like that. Um, like I said, you could use a tape measure to try to figure out how to do these holes. But what I found out would be the best thing would be to cut out little cardboard squares and use that as something to trace on here. That way, it's all lined up really nice. So we're going to go cut some squares real quick. All right, so we're going to cut the holes for these. And I'm gonna cut out templates like we just talked about. And these are about four and five eighths. So I'm gonna use this chipboard here, what we call chipboard back in the day. And we're gonna lay it out like that. And then we're just gonna go zip it down. Make sure I'm still on track here. Yeah, four and five eighths. I'm just gonna kind of space these out here. And 
And you can use whatever you want for this. I mean, you can use cardboard or whatever. I think it's just the easiest way to do this. Um, I tried to like draw it on the lid with a ruler and stuff and it's just a little more difficult. So last time I built one, this is what I did and it seemed to work nice. Then once you have them, you'll build another one and you'll be good to go. So yeah, that's pretty much your grid here. Trying to be very thorough in our videos. I'm just gonna raise or knife, knife this apart. Um, I'm on an old table here, so I'm not really worried about the table too much. You could definitely get away with just using one square, but then when you go to position it on the lid, it's nice to have all six of them there. And all right. So there they are. All right, let's get back over to our den. All right, we got our little squares here, and I'm gonna place them where I think they should be. And I'm gonna kind of keep them inside the little supportive edges around here and that should still give me enough room here so my lips not hitting the side of this wall here so this just helps you get it done nice and even you can tell what's going on measuring it out will totally get it nice and even too but it could be somewhat challenging for some people so we're doing this way and i'm not going to make you sit here and watch me trace all these so we'll probably be fast forwarding right about now So we got them all marked out. Yeah, they might look a little rough, but it's we're gonna be using a jigsaw anyway. Um, these pots have such a big lip around them that I really think, even if they're a little loose or a little tight, it's gonna be totally fine. Um, the drill is, if you've never used a jigsaw or a drill, <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, to, to do this, I need to do some holes in the corners here just to get my jigsaw started. So I'm gonna be going around doing all that. All right, something like that. Um, and as for the jigsaw portion, definitely wear some safety glasses. Um, I don't wear these a lot when I drill, I admit, I'm not totally the safest person in the world. But when it comes to this, if this thing breaks off while you're drilling, like the worst thing that in my mind is it going through my eye, so I always wear safety glasses when I'm sawing stuff. So, pretty much this gives you a little hole that this will fit down, so make sure you use something big enough that's the size of that. And I'm sure we'll be fast forwarding through this too, so here we go. And like I said, it can be a little rough. This is not, this is a do-it-yourself thing here, so. Um, 
go check these holes, make sure everything's good. You can always make them a little bit bigger, but you can't really make them a little bit smaller, so everything seems nice and tight, which is awesome. Um, once you get the clay rocks in these, these things are going to pretty much stay where they're at. They're not going to be trying to pop out. So this one here is a little bit tight, so I'm going to go use my keyboard tool real quick. If it'll even work. Hmm. Let's see if I can jigsaw a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. So that part of it should be good to go. So let's go over and get some more parts to do the water level indicator kit. All right, we already got the air stuff a little while ago. So right now I'm focusing on the water level indicator and drainage at the same time. So that's what we're gonna try to accomplish here. Um, these are cool little, these have a built-in elbow because the way we're gonna do this system is a little bit different than normal. If you haven't watched our other video on how to add a water level indicator kit, water level indicator, you should check that out. So pretty much that's going to come out of the reservoir, and then we're going to have a piece of glue tubing. We're just going to grab this roll for now. We'll cut it when we get over there. Then there's a special little clip for the end of here. And then we should be good. That should be all the parts we need. So, so yeah, this is the water level kit, which is going to end up being this tube right here coming up. So we're going to do that first. And for that, we're going to need one and a quarter inch hole saw. Now I'm going to put this, I'm going to drill this one way on the corner here. And that way, when you go to drain this thing out, you could really get the water out by tilting it just a hair. And that'll get it really drained down to where you want it. On the round buckets, we usually do one and a half inches up, but on this one, I do one and a quarter inches up from the bottom because it says it's not rounded. Things are really, they seal up a lot easier. So one and a quarter inches up, that's my bullseye for my whole saw. Silver Sharpie works really good. I'm gonna drill this, I'm gonna drill it the normal way first and I'm going to put it in reverse and drill the rest of the way through because this plastic doesn't like my drill bit as much as other ones. So, see what I'm talking about? <laughs> Alright. I have our handy dandy deburring tool. This will help take off these rough edges and make it sealed up a lot better. So I'm going to make that nice and smooth around there. We're going to be selling these on our website very soon, probably maybe by the time you see this video. All right, so that's a nice hole right there. I'm going to put our drain in. We got one O-ring on the inside, one on the out. So these little washers will help seal it up a lot better. And don't over tighten these. If you over tighten them, it's going to smush out the washer and then it's going to leak. So you can also use our regular water level kit that we sell to do something like this. All right. So my thoughts here are just like the our little prototype over there. I'm going to have the water kits. This tube is going to be show your water level and it's going to help you drain it out. So it's going to come in kind of right up around here. So grab the little white clip this is the cool white little clip here this will pretty much i'm gonna drill a little hole and that'll help hold my blue tubing where i want it so i'm gonna try to get it up as high as i possibly can because you don't want to have this below your water level so it's going to be like way up here 
as high as I can get. This this uses a quarter inch drill bit. You drill the hole, the pilot hole for it. And then it also the same drill bit for your air. So when you're building this thing, you do your air right afterwards. So that's gonna go right up here. Then your little clip can go right here. And then your blue tube is gonna run down and go right into your drain. You put this in hot water, it'll go on way easier. All right, and then we're just gonna cut off the slack here. That's your water level kit. This kind of hangs right there, and then when you need to drain it out, you can go drain it out into buckets and tilt it and get the rest of it out. Should work pretty nice. All right, so um, the air, I'm gonna go ahead and drill my air holes for these air stones here. They're gonna go above water level also. So I'm trying to keep everything down to one end of the bin. You got your stuff here or there. That way, if you're trying to drain out this corner and your air is hooked up on this side, then you're got to worry about that. So we're just going to put two little holes up here, as far up as I can get them. Sounds like my batteries are about dead. Tight fit today. I'm gonna have to ream these out a little bit. I try not to like make my air holes real big just in case any bubbling is coming out or anything like that. There we go. So that's a nice tight fit there. That's what you want on the air. to your pump got our airlines in and pretty much clean out your bin get everything nice and clean wipe everything out um, pretty much ready to go little clay rocks make sure you wash them off really good before you start because that stuff will turn into like cement in your hydro system it happens all the time people coming in on um, your air air stones try to leave this running all the time even when you're cleaning it out and that'll keep everything from sucking into the stones so um other than that i'm going to show you on this other one that we built over here the water level all right let's see get, get into the planting here a little bit when you're going to plant down in here you definitely want to make sure that your starter plants are going to be able to touch the water. So you might have to bury them down a couple inches to get to the water. Um, draining this thing should be pretty easy. When you fill it up, you can dump the water right through the rocks if you want. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, you could also make a little, a little fill hole here somewhere. That's up to you guys. When you go to drain this thing out, you can just simply use your drain hose here. And drain it out that way. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching me try to build this thing. And I'm Gary from Piaggio Ponics, Dear Springs, Pennsylvania. We have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply. We sell all these parts at both stores if you need them. Um, we might even throw a little kit on the website sometime without the bin because the bin would cost an arm and leg to ship. So just so if anybody is interested in this. You'll be able to get it. And you all have a good day.